nanohub.org. Okay, here we are at day two of our uh, semiconductor characterization training. Um, thank you all for coming. Today we're going to start with an overview of the Keithley Configura Configuration Manager utility. Now we won't go into a lot of detail because normally you really don't go into this utility very much. But this is the tool that is designed to manage all of the uh, configuration that the 4200 is attached to. The 4200 can make a lot of decisions about what, it, uh, what it's supposed to do, it can help you in its user interface if it knows everything that's attached to it. To start the KCON, you start with the, uh, the KCON icon, and that opens up the KCON utility. Now the KCON utility um, has, similar to Kite, a configuration navigator. In the configuration navigator, we will have listed every instrument, both inside the 4200, as well as external instruments that are attached, such as switch matrices, probe stations, or uh, AC impedance meters. Anything that is in the configuration navigator, the 4200 looks for when it powers up. So if it powers up and enters kite, it goes to this configuration manager and says, what all is supposed to be attached? And if it detects that either internal instruments aren't functioning or external instruments aren't functioning, it will give you a warning and say, you have not attached your probe station or your thermal chuck or something else. It will warn you that that part of your system is not powered on or not operating. If it's an internal instrument that is not operating, it won't let you proceed until you troubleshoot that instrument. If it's an external instrument, something controlled by GPIB or RS-232 or USB, then it gives you the option to go ahead and continue your testing. This is the working area of KCON. If you select any of the instruments from the configuration navigator, their entire set of properties will come up in the working area, including things like their GPIB addresses or other properties of that, their current rev level, or maybe their um, software level. <clears throat> so the configuration manager gives us a complete picture of the 4200. If there's ever an issue troubleshooting problems with the 4200 and you want to communicate to a Keithley factory applications engineer, the configuration manager has a configuration file which tells us every single thing about your system. So that configuration file can be easily converted to HTML by using the file menu and then you can email that HTML file to Keithley and we can use that to support you. Here's an example of looking at the properties of a medium power source measure unit. Uh, all of the revisions of the medium power source measure unit are here. But the important button I wanted to point out here is the self-test button. All the internal instrumentation has a self-test capability. And if you press this button, it will go through a very complete set of checks on the instrument to tell you if it's functioning properly. If it fails the self-test, there's a, probably a pretty serious problem. When running the self-test, make sure that you disconnect all cables from the instrument. Part of the things we do in a self-test might cause some voltage to come out of the instrumentation, so you don't want it attached to your, your sensitive device. If you're using a switch matrix card, which is quite popular with the 4200, this is how we define the pins of the switch matrix card. Now, we created this matrix definition for a specific reason. When using a switch matrix, the user typically likes to think in terms of, here's my instrument, and here's my probe card or my device pin. I really don't care what's in between. Connect my instrument to my device pin. And so the matrix, creates that path in between. This actually allows you to define that path. So if you create a, a project or a set of test routines that use the switch matrix and define the instrument and the pin, that can be handed to different test systems even if they have a different matrix. As long as the user has defined the matrix and the pin, that then that project will work properly with his test system. 
Now, all external instruments that are internally controlled by the 4200 have to be added here. We have a variety of instrumentation that we provide drivers for, external instrumentation. When you add the instrumentation here, that gives things like our programming language access to them. It gives um, our external command language access to them. It gives knowledge to the system that there's something external connected. We did add something we call the general purpose test instrument. This is just a general in interface to instruments that maybe we have not written a driver for yet, but it still gives you a way to plug uh, almost any instrument into here and create a driver for it. Okay, the next topic we want to cover is the Keithley User Library Tool. This is the low-level programming tool that's inside the 4200. This is a, a, the low level programming of a 4200 normally is not done. Normally the graphical user interface, we call it Kite, is enough to do anything that most users want to do. However, there are times when a user wants to do something that may be not supported in the graphical user interface or maybe something really sophisticated and they can drop into this low level programming tool and create any program that they want. So this tool the Keithley User Library tool is actually a C programming shell that is intended to create and manage user libraries. User libraries contain inside of them things called user modules. A user module is sort of one test, one complete test, but a library could be a collection of tests that may or may not be related. These are all C subroutines. These are all, this creates dynamic link libraries that can actually be called from other places. User libraries are created to uh, control the instrumentation, analyze data, perform functions on external instrumentation or probe stations. Once a library has been built, it can be executed on any 4200 without using Colt. The user library is the foundation of a user test module, and user test modules are executable in the standard Kite environment. This is just a brief overview of our C shell. Um, it tells you what library you currently have loaded, or you can load the library from the file menu, what module in the library you're working on, what the call to that dynamic link library looks like, and then all the source code, and then down here is the definition of variables. In C programming, the definition of variables is, is incredibly important. C manages variables and memory very carefully, so this tool gives you a way to carefully manage that. There's also complete options in here for compiling and building the libraries. So really, it's not necessary to go outside of this environment. However, if you are an advanced programmer, the 4200 has the Visual C, um, Visual Studio environment embedded in it. So to start Cult, you just click on the Cult icon. Now an interesting thing about Cult is that it can actually be run simultaneously with Kite. This is kind of a neat troubleshooting tool or diagnostic tool. You can go into Cult, modify a library or a user test module, compile it, and then pop right back into Kite and execute it. So you can see immediately what it's doing. We do have a complete tutorial on how to program in Colt in the complete reference manual. And we have, of course, a command reference for Colt. Now the other way to program the 4200, if you choose to, is using it in an external computer talking through the GPIB or the Ethernet. We call this the Keithley External Command Set, or Kixie for short. Kixie allows you to use an external computer to control the 4200. When the 4200 is being controlled by an external computer, it looks like any other GPIB instrument. In other words, its internal PC function is hidden, hidden from you. The PC function that provides the front panel of the 4200, that's all hidden. So it becomes just another GPIB instrument. The front panel of the 4200 
becomes a diagnostic panel. In other words, every command that comes into the 4200 shows up on that diagnostic panel and everything that goes back out shows up. It's a wonderful programming and diagnostic tool. Additionally, the front panel, when you're creating, when you use Kixie to create sweeps, the front panel, if you command it to do so, will actually uh, show you a graph of those sweeps. So it's a very nice diagnostic tool. The external command set has a compatibility mode with the legacy HP 4145. There's a number of, of modeling packages and other software out there that has drivers for the HP 4145 legacy product, and this has a compatibility mode for that. We also have a LabVIEW driver available for the 4200. So if you're using LabVIEW on an external computer, <clears throat> you can download this driver and then control the 4200 using LabVIEW. <clears throat> this is what the front panel display of the 4200 looks like when Kixie is running. Uh, you click the Kixie icon to start it. You get your command message and display area, and you get a graph area. So every command that comes in, including the status, gets listed up here. It's a wonderful uh, troubleshooting tool for programming it. And everything that it sends out is also listed here. And if it's uh, certain compatible data, it will be graphed over here in the graph display area. Uh, very short, I actually listed this as Appendix 1, but it's not an appendix anymore. Um, system administration. <clears throat> The 4200, like any Windows computer, allows multiple users. And you can create multiple user accounts. Now the purpose for multiple user accounts is to allow the user to configure the 4200 to match his particular needs. The display, the way he's got it set up, those type of things. In most cases we find multiple user accounts really aren't necessary, even in a multi-user environment. But we give you people the option to do that. The standard account is called the KI user account. If it's the standard login, you type all lowercase KI user, and there is no password on that. Actually, if I recall Windows correctly, it doesn't care about the case of the user account name but it cares about the case of the password. There is a KI admin account of which we give you access to that you can use to create new user accounts and do other administrative things. And then we refer, we reserve a, an administrator account for Keithley service personnel only. We don't give you access to that. Now the 4200, when we introduced it, we created what we call the embedded PC policy. It was one of the first instruments on the market to actually embed a full Windows compatible PC. And we were concerned that people might treat that instrument PC like their desktop PC or their laptop PC, and they would load whatever software they wanted on it. Now the integrity of the Windows on the 4200 is is very good. The integrity of Windows is very good. It's usually other programs that misbehave in Windows and create the problems. So we created an embedded PC policy that basically says don't load any other software on here unless it's on the Keithley approved software list. Like we have approved a number of different uh, virus checkers and, and office products and things like that. If it's on our approved list, fine, no problem. But if you load software on here and then you begin to have a problem with system stability, the system crashes or does other things, and you contact us for application support, which we provide free for the life of the product, you know, one of the things we'll ask you is, well, what have you loaded on the software? You have to remove that before I can diagnose the system. Okay. And, and if you can't remove that, or if you won't remove that, then we really don't have the ability or the capability to troubleshoot a Windows PC from an application's perspective, right? We just, we can't do that. So our embedded PC policy states that if you want to put software on here, if it creates a problem, take it back off and then we'll help you with the system. <clears throat> 